All right, guys, usually no editing, but uh, we do have a puppy dog's life in the balance, and we wanted to make sure that there was no problem. Uh, so just to let you guys know what's going on here, uh, Sparky is having some problems with the puppy dog, and uh, the vet's office called her in the middle of us recording this, but that, that's okay. We're just gonna we're just gonna continue on. Where were we? Oh, the, uh, the we puppy dog is okay so far, correct? Yes, so far. Yes. So, so far, we're good. Okay. And I know that I'll get that question five times by Evan after this is recorded. Uh, and the zombie stuffy. <laughs> yeah, if you haven't... If you, if you couldn't tell, I love all things zombies. So, like, my top, like, three horror picks are, like, werewolves, zombies, vampires. Like, I absolutely adored the, season, the show iZombie. It was amazing. Really? I hated that show. I loved it. I liked the idea of, you know, them eating the brains gives them the memories of the person that the brain belonged to, so it's easier for them to figure out who killed them. Oh, um, the... Warm Bodies also had a similar thing where um, R, the zombie, um, ate someone's brains and got their memories, and then they started becoming more human the more they hung out, and they actually, yeah. That Spoilers actually sounds horrible. Spoilers seen it. Could you imagine going to a horror house and eating brains? Yeah, no, that's that's horrible. But uh, could you imagine going into a humanity. going into a VA and eating brains? Oh. I don't even eat brains. I don't even. You've never had brain? No, oh. I don't do organ meats. It tastes I like can't... tofu. I can't. Do, I can't do organ meats. It, it tastes, makes me. It straight up tastes like tofu. Like, I don't I have I'm another so way of, of, of doing it. It tastes like tofu. I'm so much of an empath, like, I can't even eat heart or anything like that because it just makes me, like, it feels wrong. Like, yeah. it just viscerally feels wrong. Nope, it's it, it straight up tastes like tofu. Like, I don't know what the heart tastes like because I haven't eaten heart. But I've eaten brains, uh, and it tastes like tofu. Uh, heart is very irony. That would make I, sense. My dad tried so tricking me once. Yeah. He, he tried tricking me once. He's like, oh, have this jerky. And I was like, it's a heart. He goes, no, it's jerky. And I'm like, I can see the aorta. It's a heart. You can't, you can't fool me. <laughs> why, oh why my is the God, jerky this is like a dark turn. <laughs> dark turn. For anyone who doesn't know, I live in the middle of nowhere. And my family is very good at living off the land. So I think I would be fine in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, that's why I don't believe that it'd be 273, because there's no. more than that many people living, basically, where there are miles in between. You know, the, the nearest... the, you know that some New Yorker or something, somebody in a big town or big a big city made this article because... Right. Like, like... I could make it out of my... Out of, it, it, even if I didn't know. Like, I live in a rural area... But it's still, you're talking about a thousand feet between me and my neighbors. Right. right? And there's not right. that many people between me and getting out of the city. And there are there are several roads where all it is is miles and miles of nothing. Straight yeah. nothing. We're definitely more of an advantage because we are, like I said, I live in the sticks. Like, my nearest neighbor is a quarter of a mile away. Oh, I know. And there's more so than like, 273 people in the world that literally have their own self-sustaining ecosystem inside of an area. Yeah. I mean, it, oh, what would it take? Like, I, you know, I guess that would be a good question is I, and I think I think I would love to see the criteria for which they did this, because let's say let's say the zombies can smell you, but they can only smell you within 50 yards, which all, which all that means is that whatever fence you build has to be 50 yards away of your living quarters minimum. And if you make it 150 yards, you have triple that. Right. And then if you think if you if you make zombie bait to keep them away from your scent. Yeah, that is also an option. I mean, so yeah, so you just put little traps all the way around the place. I mean, it, it just seems like this this isn't quite right. You know, I I mean, if we say if we say that that the that the zombie apocalypse started in New York City, so so first they're gonna start. Hey, there's a there's some disturbance. There's political unrest or whatever. They'll probably call them Trump supporters or something. Um, and then you'll see them kind of sweep through. Or they might be BLM supporters. 
Honestly, those are interchangeable sometimes when it comes to riots. Uh, so, so just to piss off both sides at, 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 during this <laughs> during this whole thing. Um, so you got them sweeping oh. through, right? And then eventually you're like, it's a virus. It's and maybe even today, I would say today. I wonder if this is off of a airborne virus. This could be off of yeah, an airborne think it, virus. Because an airborne virus would definitely sweep right through. Yeah, because uh, a lot of if what it, we're saying going, wouldn't. Yeah. Yeah, because direct contact would take, like you said, it would take a couple days for symptoms to show, depending on how fast that virus works. That's something that always annoys me about uh, zombie movies. Is at yeah. the beginning of the movie, it takes like a day or two for the virus to to take effect, and then by the end of the movie, it takes like ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah. As... I think that would actually. I think the thing for that is how good your immune system is, maybe, because maybe your body does try to fight it off, and then it just succumbs to it. Um, Take your I'm vaccines, at... people. All of them. Fun fact, I'm actually writing a zombie apocalypse novel, and I've been working on it for about six years. But, so, um, okay, okay. It's a, it's a work in progress. It's a but, work in progress. Um, I, I have a character in my book who's actually semi-immune to the virus. Um, basically, she's mutated, so okay. she has all the strengths of the zombie... But her weakness is sometimes she just has to kill things. She just gets this uncontrollable rage and has to kill things. She doesn't want to, but she has to. And uh, S sounds I like thought a, of a uh, customer service worker. <laughs> yeah, no, she was raised by a, a a hitman for the mafia. Oh, so you know. I mean, I, you can yeah. get the same effect with a customer service worker. But um, she actually has a trick for um, keeping zombies away from your base. Okay. So you want to know what it is? That's not a lot. What is it? What is it? What is it? All right. Content. Gore warning. Um, so you take a body and you get like a sack of some sort. Grain sack, burlap sack, anything you can find really. And you take the body and you put it through a wood chipper and uh -huh. you collect the things and you leave those bags away from your base so that the zombies are attracted to that and not the smell of your people. Content warning has ended. I wonder how that would work. In, cause, cause now, you'd have to in have... the lore, in, in the lore though, it's alive bodies that attract, not dead ones. <laughs> That's the, that's the question, isn't it? I mean, yeah. I mean, you you def you definitely can can put that make that work in a book. I'm just thinking that if this happened oh, no. in reality, oh no, you you would have to have someone you really really don't like to be bait, which is also an option if you're chaotic neutral. So to my chaotic neutral buddies, my daughter's boyfriend, got it. <laughs> He's a big boy. We could do this. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, no, I have a perfect person. I'm not going to say their name or how I know them. This rooster been but properly warned? It's not rooster. Oh. Rooster knows the plan. Evan, run! Who, who's going to be our bait. Evan, run! Shade! Mm -mm. No, not Evan. No, it's someone from my past that I'm just like... Karma needs to hit them real hard. With a baseball bat. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and run! <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know, I mean... <laughs> I, again, I think that this is a little bit overblown. I I, I would love to see the criteria yeah. that they, uh, they actually put this up with. Um... I don't know. Assuming, vi assuming virus is spread through the contagious regions and that the zombies are somewhat limited, their ability to travel not leaving their current region. There were 100,000 zombies roaming here. Human survivors would be... I also thought of another hmm. stipulation for that. What about cold climates? So during the winter, do the zombies just stop or do they slow down because of the cold? We, that's that's another question Is is if there was a real zombie... I mean, really, that comes down to I think I think you would need lots of guns 
at the beginning of it with or without oh, yeah. silencers because when you first get infected and you're being and you're turned, then you'll be at your fastest. I mean, the real trick and is how long can you actually survive in order to get to the point where the zombies are slowing down and you can jog through places as opposed to sprinting. Oh, this is a cool card. Well, um, back to there? the weapons. It says, learn to use a bow and arrow. They're silent and arrows are reusable. True. That is a good, that is a good tip. Uh, unless there's more than, you know, your quiver full yeah. of zombies, which is like 20. Yeah, this is also true. Yeah. And the bows aren't as accurate as the as the guns of today. This is this is also true. I mean, if, if I we were talking seventeen hundreds, <laughs> but today, no, no, not not when I can take you out with a headshot, uh, you know, with a with a sniper rifle from a thousand yards. Ooh, that's also a good idea. Shortwave radios to stay connected. Shortwave, long wave. Radios are great. Honestly, that was the like the number one way that people circumvented um, us as the United States military. Getting a hold of them was they used shortwave radios. the The reason why it was so effective was you could use uh, code words for things, just in case. And you could and and if you had to be inside of a certain radius in order for the uh, radios to work, which which meant that like when we went in there, we knew they were within 300 yards of where we were standing, but we didn't know exactly what they were saying. We kind of had an idea of what they were saying. Assuming that the zombies could be that intelligent, I don't know if the zombies could actually be that intelligent. Maybe, depends maybe on the like, Again, it depends on the type of zombie, because I um, can't remember which one it was. I don't know if it was World War Z or something like that, but the zombies basically, like, did their own, like, what they were, did before they died. So the gas station attendant still tries to pour gas, doesn't know why he's doing it. But eventually he, like, looks up and just starts walking. And I don't know if you've seen the movie, but they like another zombie like follows him and they walk to the edge and they kind of just like go off the edge of the cliff and start walking across the bottom of the ocean. You know, I'm reading through this article about the real zombie stuff and I don't see anything saying that he slowed down. No, what I'm wondering as the body decays, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So they, would the cold I, affect their joints and their bones and anything like that? Like normal. So the um, best time of year to have a zombie apocalypse, if your goal is survival, would be winter. But that, that's a double-edged sword because winter is where there's less supplies. Oh, that's just for people that don't have a built-in heater like my wife. <laughs> no, she's been going through the change I for mean, 20 years. <laughs> But I mean, I can like go into the woods and find things to survive off of, you know. So. Oh, I can go into the woods here and find things to survive off of. It's called canned food in the neighbor's house. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, if there is no more canned food, like, obviously, you know, you're supposed to boil water before you consume it. That's not necessarily true. There are filters in which you do not need to boil water before consuming it. If you've bought them uh it, it basically is a tube with a with several filters built in they're very handy if you do any kind of wilderness traveling where you know eventually you're gonna run out of water and even boiling it is not going to kill all toxins uh getting getting out of it um when we were in survival training they would give us tablets that we would put in because uh, again there's two things if you have to boil water, that means that you have to have a campfire. If you have to have a campfire, that attracts people, um, in this case, true. zombies to your location. So that can be very dangerous where you can just throw a few tablets of this. It tastes like ass. I won't lie. The tablets taste horrible, but you won't die. And uh, if right. you are starving, pine needle tea is a thing. Uh, stick some pine needles. It will kind of help fill you up for, I mean... It'll take the edge off. It won't. It won't stop it from hurting, but it will take a little bit of the edge off. Uh, you know, 
Luckily, I, I live in a location where there are pine trees as far as the eye can see. There's pine. You know, I, I will yeah. say, I will say, I um, there's a little Asian market called Ocean Market, Japan or like China Japanese market or whatever, or China Ocean Market uh, up the street for me. Um, I went there and I found donkey horny tea, weed tea, horny donkey weed tea. No shit. Is that something that got lost in translation? Maybe. I don't know, but if it makes me horny, it'll be worth it. <laughs> or my uh... wife, if it makes my wife horny. That is another thing for the zombie apocalypse. Stock up on birth control. Ooh. You do not want to be having a baby in the apocalypse. For all you women out there, all the people with uteruses, stock up on birth control. Because trust me, you don't want to go into labor when there's a horde of zombies surrounding your base. No. Wait until everything is settled out, then work on repopulating. But not before. Sorry. Rant over. I think you underestimate how horny people are. Oh, I know. And it's you the biological thing. Bunch it's of like, we must, we must fix the system. It's like, no, wait till everything is settled first, you know? Um, there'd be some bitch Emotions. out there that, 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 that was like baby hungry and having baby fever. That'd be like, impregnate me! Oh, you know what? I, I wonder also if this took in, into account these zombie rights activists. The zombies have feelings too. <laughs> right? I just had them. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you myself know, for it. You know as soon as it's going to uh... happen, there's going to be some zombie rights activists. I mean, if there's a chance of a cure, yes. But also, like, you have to think about yourself and your family. Oh, no, with or without a cure, you know some, some jackass out there is going to be like, zombies have rights, too, and we should give them health care and zombie rights. Uh, zombie sexuals, there will be zombie sexuals. I'm sure this took that into account. Oh, probably. There are yeah. probably some freaky people out there that... Let, let's just put a uh, little piece of heaven... If anyone knows that reference. Ooh. Wow, you went there. I went there. I am a glass Sparky, in. Sparky, ban so... yourself! Bonk. Okay, Okay. good. Moving along. More wine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I, I mean... Yeah, I mean, you've got to take those people into account. Uh, mostly they'll be centered around, I mean, you know, uh, they're actually going to be centered around, um, high populated areas, LA County, New York yeah. City, Houston. Uh, these, these are traditionally going to be places that will have those type of, of personalities that want to have some sort of rights or whatever. So they will actually be the first ones to go. That really doesn't honestly hit when it comes to rural areas, such as where you live, I live, uh, um, Mostly people where you and I live just want to be left alone, don't really give a shit. Let's just be honest. This is just, true. This is true. As long as the government doesn't interrupt their day-to-day -day lives, they really don't care. And... You want to know something? You want to know something that's scary? Um, I was on Facebook the other day, and I have friends that, like, can goods. And somebody got one of those, like, Facebook, hey, if you, know, if you think your family has gotten a little too into... Um, Apocalypse preparation. Let us know. Basically, they want a list of all the people that have supplies so that they can go in and requisition when right. shit hits the fan. It's like, no, I ain't telling you that shit. Right? No. I Oh, I, I uh, person that I watched was reading an article about a woman who outed her friends, her friend, her used to be best friend to the FBI because she made a joke on social media about about how Biden should just die. Which I'm not endorsing, but the FBI does not care. <laughs> the, the FBI does not care about your yeah, personal that... opinions for the most part. Like, they might investigate you, but if all you said was something in passing, they don't care. 
But yeah, no, I I completely know. So so Utah is like actually a hotbed for that because the uh, the Mormon oh, yes. Church, the yeah. Mormon Church teaches to have six months worth of food and water stocked up and at all times. And they have their own. Um, it's like Desiree Foods, and they basically have their own like big warehouse and a whole bunch of food in case things happen yeah. and uh the government was actually trying to look in on where they get all the funding for that and they're like we don't have to tell you that shit nope. it's none of your business it was totally a go fuck yourself position <laughs> oh yeah this is like no you're not and it's funny because i grew up in the lds church and i remember having some of those like we got some of the like canned like powdered drink mix powdered milk powdered eggs Oh yeah, when I was like, when I remember I was having younger. to live off of that when I was younger because. You know. Oh yeah, when when I was younger and my daughter was still like zero, my wife and I weren't in the best financial position, and the state of Utah does not give a shit about you if you're poor, uh, but the church does, and I think a lot of people don't realize this that that a lot of the the things that they expect from government were supplemented by the church before they become governmental policies, right? So the church would actually give us a lot of food and 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 really help us out. And every once in a while, we would get a big boost of canned foods, dry, you know, powdered milk, whatnot, and it was really helpful. I mean, there was there was a time where my wife and I basically just didn't eat, um, and I think that yeah, no, absolutely. I think you know what, honestly. With given Utah's mountainous terrain, the fact that it's the middle of a cold desert and and the freezing, it's almost the ideal place to be. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's sparsely populated. We only have one big population center, and it's the smallest of all the big population centers, uh, basically throughout the entire United States, and most of them are just. retards can you imagine zombies in vegas though like oh my gosh what a mess that you, could be you don't have to imagine zombies in vegas you just gotta go to vegas but they at least actually vegas does have some underground dwellings yep so there's that no vegas is fucked they're all gonna die there's no place to run you're not going anywhere if you run away, you're going to die and become a zombie in the middle of the desert, which is horrible. This is true. Yeah. There's no place to run in, in Vegas. There's a place to run in no. Utah. Yeah, there's plenty of places to run in Maine. There's just, like, lots and lots of woods, as far as the eye can see. Oh, you better hope it's not it's not the middle of winter when the zombie apocalypse hits. Yeah, the zombies will be slower, but you're going to be in 12 feet of snow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember growing up and having the snow like, like way up the pole, right? The, the telephone poles, and it's just like you're driving through like a valley of snow, snow piled up high on either side. You better have snowshoes. <laughs> yeah. You could just yeah, see a no. zombie just like. <clears throat> that would suck. That would suck. Not Slowly. only would you be cold and wet, you'd be e being eaten. I think that's the only thing worse than being cold and wet. It's cold, wet, and eaten. I could see that shit happening, too. I could see it in my head right now. And I have fallen into a snowbank before, because one of the places I used to live, they did not plow the sidewalk, or they did not shovel the sidewalks. Ooh. So I was like, well... I have to choose between walking in the snowbank or walking in the road, and I had a friend who had already been hit by a car. She was fine. She survived. But, like, I was like, and that happened a couple weeks before me having to walk through the snowbank, and I was like, I'm just going to take my chances with a snowbank. And, uh, yeah, yeah I had to call a friend for help because yeah. I got stuck in the snowbank. My boot fell off, and I was stuck trying to get my foot out of the snowbank. I was like, come help me, I'm stuck. Come help me, please. I don't want to die. No, um... I don't know, we get about three to... Three feet, four feet out here. 
I want to say. I mean, it's not it's not anything like it is in Maine when it comes to because this is honestly, it's I live in a desert, so it's not very. Yep. It's not a whole lot of water. Where I live is considered a coniferous rainforest, so lots of water. A c- coniferous. Coniferous. Coniferous rainforest. So instead of like a deciduous rainforest where you have like, um. Palm, not palm trees, but you know, trees that drop their leaves. Yeah. yeah. Coniferous rainforest is like pine trees and stuff. Pine trees and stuff. Pine trees don't drop their leaves generally. They do sometimes, but not always. Uh, that's why they're called evergreens. Um. Yeah. yeah. No. The, actually, the inner workings of that. I. I actually. I. I took a uh, six month class on botany, so I'm intimate in the way that the actual pine needles are constructed i was telling my wife uh we're, we're getting some work done and i told her i wanted a uh, evergreen bush out front she's fighting me i am going to win this argument because i want an evergreen bush out front um it's just what's going to happen and it's my house and my name on a deed and everything so i'm gonna pull that card and if i have Sorry, to live Mrs. with dirty Jen, underwear have to deal. <laughs> if, I, if i have to live with dirty underwear for a while i will be okay I just want like the smell of myself. I mean, you can always wash your own laundry, you know. <laughs> it's an option. That's not an option. You are a no go at the station. Oh, come on, you two. My dogs. Uh, dogs are also friends in the zombie apocalypse, unless you, uh, mm. I am legend. No, oh, I hate I, that movie I, uh, so much. I just, I, this is something that I've been back and forth on. Dogs can be an early warning system for zombies that are sneaking up on you. However, they can also be an attractor. Yeah. Of unwanted zombies. Yeah. So, so it's kind of a double-edged wanted, sword. It is it is a little bit. I don't necessarily I mean what you really need to do is is your ability either you've already taught the dog to be quiet or how fast can you teach the dog to shut the fuck up? Right. I mean it really right. comes down and, to that. And then also go continuing on the the zombie, you know, I am I am legend where dogs can get the virus. How terrifying is that? You've played seven days, so you know how terrifying the zombie dogs are. Zombie or dogs zombie suck. bears. Zombie anything. Like, zombie any big animal. Can you imagine, like, a zombie elephant? Like, what the fuck? Oh, or zombie God. lion, like, in that, that, that new one on yeah, Netflix. Like zombie, oh! oh. That zombie any critter would be bad. Like, zombie crows, like, in Resident Evil, the movie, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hell for that, but, like, that was creepy. Yeah, zombie crows would be the worst. Honestly, out of all the zombie critters, I think zomb- anything zombie and bird. Yeah, because, because then because you can't escape. Range. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know what, though? You know how many viruses are, are uh, inter interspecies and when there oh, yeah. is a virus that's interspecies it's like two species and that's it so i don't see a whole lot of jumping really really happening i mean it, it comes down to I'm, I'm no biochemist but i know it comes down to the actual mechanics where where all the magnets line up and 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 whatnot and how your how your dna c- compares to another dna so I know there was the swine flu, which apparently jumped from. I don't even know if it actually infected hogs. I'll be very honest with you. I know there's a bird flu that apparently had something to do with birds spreading it. Yeah. And that's what yeah. was so scary uh, about it. But but I don't see like it, it wasn't like the bird flu then gone to gone to us then went to the dogs or anything like that. So right. I don't know how feasible that is. How realistic that is. Right, I, I, I don't think we have to worry about that particular part of it. What do you so do the cool if you're about... already pregnant, though? Ooh. I mean, babies See, cry. 
then that's the thing. That's going to be the difficult part is, one, babies do cry. Two, you're going to have to find some sort of facility where you can have, like, if the pregnancy goes wrong, you're going to have to be somewhere where you can actually, like, have equipment to help you. Otherwise, you are also screwed. Well, I think, like, I think... again, Walking Dead, when Lori went there... into labor with Judith and she had a complicated pregnancy. True. There, there was a time in human history where it was a 50-50 chance a woman made it out of pregnancy. Oh, yeah. I think that would definitely repeat. Oh, yeah. Definitely, it would. I mean... Also, think about this. This is also really creepy. What if your baby... So it would... Let's say, like, in Walking Dead, it's kind of inherent that you're going to turn into a zombie. So, let's say a person loses the baby does uh -huh. the baby then turn into a zombie and eat them from the inside out Ooh. i don't know enough again, about terrifying. miscarriages yeah that's really terrifying well it's terrifying for you fortunately yeah. for me my biology doesn't have that oh. oh i thought of another good zombie movie have you ever seen cooties no it's basically a zombie apocalypse virus that only affects kids so, until you hit puberty, you're susceptible, and afterwards you're fine. Like, if you get bit or scratched, nothing happens. But if you're before puberty, you get the virus. That movie is hilarious and terrifying at the same time. There was something similar about that, where as soon as you became an adult, you got that virus. There was some, It was on Netflix, I think. I don't remember that one. I know it was on... I, 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 it, like, they would just kill you as soon as you became an adult. Oh, is that Children of the Corn? No. Because they had a thing movie. where if you be no. if you were an adult, they would kill you. Yeah. Good movie, no. Um, I'd have to look it up. I don't I don't remember. I don't I don't yeah. remember it. I know that there was a movie that was on Netflix that, that had something similar to it. Children so, of the so, corn is terrifying. I mean, as far as actual zombies of the day, we have two that I know are verifiable. One is a psychosomatic zombie where a person believes that they're becoming a zombie and they become susceptible to suggestion and will walk around doing zombie like like things. I mean this is this is this is actually the root of the actual mythos of the zombie was rooted into um what what are we voodoo voodoo was is rooted into a mesh between a, a an African uh, actually several African religions in Christianity, right? Where they came into contact and intertwine, um, and they were able to, to do this. And then the second one obviously is biologically true where a fungus infects an anthropod. The anthropod then finds itself, uh, attracted to whatever environment the, the, the fungus is going to be most likely to survive. And then that animal then carries it all the way over to where it's going to be like this, this where, where it bites into a stem and then just sits and dies and then and the, the fungus actually grows out of the back of it. This sadly is normal. It, it'll hit tarantulas, it'll hit, it'll hit uh, insects, it'll grasshoppers. hit grasshoppers. Grasshoppers is a big one. Insects, yeah, grasshoppers. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think, I don't know if this would actually hit rats. I don't. I. I. I haven't read it. Now, I, as far as I know, it's just anthropods. That's if whoever at the CDC isn't already testing it, trying to figure out if it can go do that. There I is. Actually just... There is the conspiracy theory that COVID was a precursor. Don't take this down to YouTube. We're joking around. No. Oh. Yeah. No. No. But there is actually, I don't know if they still have it up, but the CDC does have a guideline for if the zombie apocalypse happens. Like I read CDC that guideline. Things. It's horrible, and that's probably where they got the only 200 people who are going to survive this shit. Because they don't realize that we're smarter than they think. Some of us will actually know, oh, this person looks like they're a zombie. I'm going to let them get close to me because that seems like a really good idea. Before you say that we're not smarter than you think, I want to remind you that 45% of the United States population voted for Trump, and then, just to piss both sides off, 55% of this population voted for an obviously mentally unstable man like Biden.
I'll piss both sides off, Sparky. You've got to remember that that was the choice. Yes. I'm going to disillusion you. Here's a red pill. Uh... This is a thing. Yeah, we voted for a guy with dementia. So, actually, this deck actually talks about... I found the ice, the freezing one. A zombie will slow and eventually freeze solid in sub-zero temperatures. So I guess that's the... If it's yeah, but would it come back zero. alive afterwards? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Would they thaw back out? Good. Or do you just go around during when it's sub-zero and just take them out while they can't move? You know, the culling of the herd. Every well, winter. there are those fish... There are those fish in uh, Antarctica. It's, e it's either out of the North Pole or the South Pole where they can freeze and then be fine. I think there are frogs that do that too. They're like under Turn the freaking frogs, guy! Had to do it. <laughs> Had to do it. I've been watching a lot of Alex Jones lately because he's been doing a lot of podcasts. I've been wanting to do that. For a little while. That guy is... It, 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 I don't know if he, he's... He, he, you know what's scary about Alex Jones? Some of his stuff that he says is Googleable. Yes, but then some of the other things that he says, it's just like, what left field do you pull that out of? <laughs> right. What the hell is wrong with you? That and his mineral water. Yeah. All right, moving, moving along. <laughs> yeah, moving along. <laughs> moving along. Um, I mean, I think we hit most everything. Is there any other topics that you wanted to hit when it comes to the zombie apocalypse and survival? Well, we don't know if the zombie apocalypse is ever going to happen. But if it does, remember that the zombies are not your biggest threat. There will always be somebody who wants to take things from you. So the really the yes. biggest threat is ourselves. The biggest, there will be people the biggest who... threat. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree entirely. Go ahead. I'm sorry. My apologies. <laughs> no, no. It's fine. But yeah, the biggest threat is ourselves. The biggest threat is people who want to take what you have. So yes, grouping up with other people is beneficial. But you have to make sure you're grouping up with the right people. And you, you don't, don't want someone who's going to... get to choose who. Right. And then again, you just have to make split-second decisions. And you have to be okay with the decisions that you choose. The decisions you end up making. Just remember, when in doubt, kill everybody. Basically. No. <laughs> but Trust, I, I think but verify. I think that's honestly the um, something that, uh, especially Walking Dead, definitely portrays really well. Is is You had this overarching, okay, there's a zombie apocalypse. But then you had your own inter, we'll call it intertribal confrontation. Yeah, inter -tribal. that's definitely accurate. Yeah, intertribal confrontation. I think that's something that we honestly see today, especially in politics. We see that going on today is my tribe versus your tribe. It's not even necessarily if I'm right or you're right. It's, it's well, I'm on this side and you're on that side. Therefore, we have to not like each other. I, I was I was pointing this out to. Um, New World. New World just came out not uh, a month ago, and they have literally only severed people by the color of the band of their clothes. <laughs> only that separates them, and you're already seeing. So purple, green, and yellow. These are basically neutral colors, right? And you will see people in chat Kill all yellows, kill all ye purples, kill all greens. Uh, the only good green is a dead green. They oh. definitely like to perpetrate an us versus them mentality. They, they, It's like the powers that be know that if we all like band together and we all like push past our differences and work as a unit, they can't stop us, which is why they do what they do. That's why there is the, oh, if you're gay, you don't belong, or if you're you know, black, you don't belong. Or if if we all just got rid of that political separatist bullshit, we could strive to do so many good things. 
I don't even know how much of it is actually separating gays um, and black people from anybody. Examples. You know, no, no, no. I think I, I, I completely get you. I don't. The thing that's the what I'm trying to portray is the thing that's been in my brain is you. You're right that they have a tribal that that people in general have a tribal mentality, but I think it's just the people that you know, and it could be anybody at, versus the people that you don't know, which again can be anybody. And it, I don't think it really is adherent to the reason why I say this. Uh, I got called just a white privileged man by people I didn't know, but the people that did know me and knew knew any part of my background would say, "Oh, we don't mean you when we say this." I'm like, "Yeah, because you you know me, so am I just a part of your tribe because you know me?" Does that, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. When, when when I said, hey, uh, my background is Irish. My father died when I was 12. I, I my, my mother was a, my mother was the first one to actually go to university. And then, and then my, I tried to go and I actually did get all the way through at the beginning. And my brother wasn't able to go because he couldn't afford it. And uh, then I had to join the military. Like, well, people actually know my background. Right. Versus the people that don't. So if somebody on the street sees me, white privilege. Right. And then somebody who actually knows me will sit down and say, actually, no. Right. And I, I, I always wonder if it's, that's a you know me versus not know me. And I again, that comes back to the green versus yellow versus purple. Right. Is it because you and I picked green up and stuck that on our arms and we decided to talk for five seconds beyond good morning? Is that the reason why you you will allot me some leeway versus the guy who took purple up and stuck that on his arm, who you've only conversed with for two seconds, where it was, what's up, what's up, and that was it. an interesting thought i i don't know um but, and i think that 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 in the later uh the the later seasons of the walking dead when when people who were the bad guy at the beginning of it and they start giving those bad guys their own episodes and you start to get to know them and then you start to understand why they are the way they are and they start to push you over to liking them and then they become main characters as the other main characters pass away and then they push them it's, into that is, is it because you don't know them that's why they're the bad guy Negan says it best when he goes bad guys don't necessarily know that they're the bad guys well Thanos I mean, honestly, I was like, Thanos never viewed himself as the bad guy. And if he had won, would he have been the bad guy? Yes, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's like people do sometimes do fucked up things for the right reasons. True. And then this, at the same time, good people will do... Or, yeah, good people will do bad things for the wrong reasons. So, well, you know, I, I will tell you this. Follow your moral compass. I will tell you this. When I was in Afghanistan, sometimes we would have a river. Okay. And you would have two towns that were dependent on that river for survival. Right. So what they would do. Since two, and then two towns were just too much for that one river, especially in Afghanistan because they're very small. So what they would do is they would go to war for the rights over that river, and the winter it really meant that they had a much 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 easier time surviving the winter versus the loser. And and basically they would they would they would just agree to go to war, go to war, fight a war, whoever won. Got the rights to the river because basically the other sides, all their men were dead. Um, and that was it. If you were the losing party, you didn't physically have the capability of going down to the river and being able to get what you needed for survival. So you had to find a different way. 
uh, and then, and then, of course, your chances of survival would would greatly decrease. It didn't mean that it was zero; it just greatly decrease. But it would be like this town versus that town that were like twenty five miles apart. Really, very, 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 very close. And in both instances, in both instances, they were the good guys. If you were in this town, you were the good guys. You were trying to help your wife, your child, your family, what have you, your neighbors. And if you were in that town, same thing. Wife, child, neighbors, all your family. Uh, the only difference was one clan, like if they were the same clan, that would be something different. They would try to come to an agreement, but for the most part, and as far as U S military went, we would try to broker a deal between them. Sometimes we were able, we were successful. We were able to meet an agreement and sometimes we were not, uh, able to meet an agreement and then, and then a, a small war would, would happen. I think this is something that. Again, when you when you decimate the population down to let's just let's let's be generous and say this is two hundred fifty thousand people, right? Right. So then you've got several tribes all over the all over the world that are a hundred plus people. Uh, yeah. I mean, then then what do you do, right? Uh, they will go to war with each other. Yeah. I did think of something that we didn't cover. What did we cover? Tire. What you need to wear. Anything that keeps Do you warm. Do not wear heels. Yeah, well that. Do not wear heels in the tell apocalypse. That gal in yes, the, they're in stylish. The, you gotta tell that gal in Jurassic World. Yeah. But also, like, you want to wear things that will be harder to bite through. So if they do get close, you don't just get bit. So, like, jean, jacket, leather... Coming Maybe make your own man, chain mail. Coming from a man that has intimate relate that has had intimate relation in thigh high high heel boots. It'd be very difficult to bite through. Yes, but you can't run in them. Or not. Tell as that well. to that lady. I in know. Jurassic World. Yeah, I'd like to see her try to run from zombies through the woods in heels. She ran from a Tyrannosaurus Rex Sparky! Yes, they are sight-based. Zombies don't care about sight or smell. They'll just go for you. If they see you, they're going for you. If they smell you, they're going for you. If you trip over a log, they will descend upon you and you're fucked. Fuck doesn't sound so bad right now. Also, vehicles are not gonna be your friend. Because again, they're loud. Yes, it'll get you places, but then you have to worry about gas. You do have to worry about fuel, but you just need the right kind of vehicle. First, you need a vehicle that has a good bit of storage space, gets decent gas mileage, and you need canteens. And armor. Yeah, you don't really need armor. I mean, that way if you hole up in your car, the zombies can't just break the window and pull you out. I honestly think that people underestimate how hard and or easy it is to break through one of those windows it's really not that easy go ahead and go punch your window no Uh, it it hurts it yeah i I can tell you by experience it hurts uh also a few bars on the windows wouldn't be a bad idea which wouldn't be that very difficult for some vehicles like a jeep to tack on uh, and and be able to do that. You might have to have a lot of bars, but you could tack those on. Um, yeah. It, 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 one of the things that's always bothered me as a military uh, person was the ease at which people got into tanks. Yeah. With a welder. With a welder that was specific in cutting, it would take you days. It would take you fucking days to get into a tank. You're not going to get on top of a tank and open the fucking hatch. It's not the way it works. Right? It is locked from the goddamn inside. With inches of steel. You're not breaking into that fucker. Ooh, but the killdozer guy, though. Like that vehicle, though, you could just right over the zombies. Just 
fuck. A bulldozer? Yeah, no, you can fuck up. You can fuck a up some with a bulldozer. With a bulldozer. The dude yeah. that like he like welded himself into a bulldozer <laughs> that he had armored out, and he just went on a rampage because I can't remember exactly why he went on the rampage. He had reasons, and they were pretty good reasons. But yeah, killdozer. That was. The killdozer was amazing. I would love I would love to be like in a uh honestly the the one thing that I would like to be in is a uh striker. So a striker is an eight-wheeled vehicle and it gets okay gas mileage. You would need lo it has lots of, of tankers that you can stick on the back of it and you can have a remoted 50 cal on the top. Oh, oh yeah. Nice. Rem yeah. You just sit there and be like, okay. And there's no way. Like, I don't give a shit how many zombies are surrounding that fucker. You're not getting out. It's amphibious. It it can adjust its own air pressure in the tires. All sorts of goodies. You don't even know. I'm thinking like a base, like a good base, would probably be something that's a lot more underground isolated I, underground under underground or on an island in the middle of nowhere uh, like surrounded by is, ocean i'm not sure okay so so this is something i was discussing with my family i'm not entirely certain that underwater is the best idea it so zombies do not have to breathe a depending on this how deep the the water is the, the water would have to be so deep that it would crush bone and or at least muscle Right, so it really depended on how deep the 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 surrounding water body of water was around you, before because it, it, let's say let's say I go a hundred meters deep on an island, a hundred meters deep on an island, and the zombies are, it just makes it easier for them to go and dig into me. Now I have to compete with the with the with the zombies, and an infiltration of water. Not to mention, if they do get into the water, would they bite sharks and make the shark zombies? Shark zombies. God. Tornado shark zombies. Right. I just imagine sci-fi seeing this and then, like, putting in zombie sharks. Copyrighted! Now on sci-fi! Yeah, Intelligent. you can't do this can't, to us! Yeah, you can't, you, no. You have to pay us. Pay if you come up with this idea, you have to pay at us. At least $50 or more. Right? Let me play in the movie. I'll be happy. Just <laughs> not a walk-on role. I want to be a fucking star. Oh yeah. Okay. We've established uh... this. <laughs> Sci-fi producers, you know what to do. Do the thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, if you've made that many tornado shark movies, zombie shark tornado, tornado movies, shark nado, zombie yeah. dado, zombie shark nado, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Sorry, idea. So, uh, what is one of your favorite zombie content? Like, what is? Oh, World like, War there Z. There's so many options. World War Z. World my War favorite. Z. My all. I love Twenty Eight Days Later. I love that scene at the end of the movie where he finally has had enough, and he's like, "I'm not gonna be the good guy anymore because it's only gotten me in trouble." So. I'm just gonna do what I have to to protect my friends, and I lo love that ending scene. It's just it builds like the music, and when he goes after the the army people who are not the good guys, it's like I oh, I, I, I do love like that the scene. I do like Twenty Eight Days Later, but I I like the World War Z because they're they're. Like it's Israel that everybody has to go to because it's got the wall, uh, and then the yeah. wall is is like decimated. Um, I think that honestly, being in the middle of the ocean is the only way to be to survive from a zombie apocalypse, um, because that is going to be deep enough to destroy any zombies. I think it'll be more than two hundred seventy people. Yeah, but I I also think that uh you know you have to go to port right to to gain fuel to gain uh, uh uh food tequila you need all of the essentials um you want to be able to fish hopefully. yeah you want to be able to fish and get drunk um 
I mean, both of those things have to happen. But you could do things like, uh, like if anybody's watched Waterworld, you can do things like. Uh, I love uh, Waterworld. Oh, Waterworld's amazing. But it, you can do things it's like Waterworld, where you have, where you have layers and 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 uh, uh, vegetables and fruits growing. So I think that'll be the dominant. And then you're going to have people on the top of mountains where it's an easily defendable area. And they're just able to just destroy anything that tries to. Because you're going to have time before the zombies actually get to you. Right? Oh, so yeah. I think I think honestly 270 people is a little off. I think that it'll probably yeah. be more in the 270,000 people range, which is still an enormous amount when you're talking about like 7.5 billion people worldwide down to, right. you know, so let's, let, I mean, let's be generous. Let's say it's 1% of 750,000 people. Um, I mean, I think, I think that we, we would see at least that uh, depending on how fast the virus circumvents is it, is it airborne is it is it is it uh bodily contact. fluid uh is it phys is it just physical contact what have you right um i mean as far as that some of the things that take away if you've made it this far into this two-hour conversation oh uh, it's a good weapon yeah have hollow points have a silencer Wear appropriate clothes. <laughs> yeah, booty shorts is not appropriate clothes. No, no, you're gonna want jeans. You're gonna want leather. Jeans. Chainmail if you can make it. Oh yes. Uh, I mean, you definitely want to have something like that. Sword is the best, I think. Sword or machete. Sword or machete. You want to learn. You want to learn how to be self-sustaining. Grow your own food. Vegans. Learn how this to hunt. You. Uh. Vegans are very self-sustaining. Grow there chickens. There's plenty of plants, but like, <laughs> grow chickens. All right, but I mean, as far as that, now, guys, uh, if you if you don't know it, I know that Sparky. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up this episode for today. Uh, keep in mind, Sparky is coming by. She is going to be starting her own channel once she figures out her RAM situation. Uh, if you like what you saw today, please like, share, subscribe, share. Share it. Share it. Share it. The this little share button has a little arrow that goes you. like this. Share it. Uh, come watch me on Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays at twitch.tv forward slash Sergeant Zero Gen. And you'll see me there because I am the mod and I keep an eye there. in the chat. So She does. Uh, we are... You know, trying to de-escalate de 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 people that don't like, apparently, the military. But um, we will deal with that later. Appreciate everybody for watching this. Have a happy and safe Halloween. Make sure that if the uh, uh, edibles that your kids get that have weed in it, that you eat them first. I mean, you don't eat them. You don't, you don't eat them. No. You throw those away. Right, Sparky? Yeah, that's what I thought, Sparky. Thank you for agreeing with me. Uh, throw the edibles away. Yes, and, yes. throw them away. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, make sure that they make them into your stomach. I mean, garbage. And uh, I hope that all of you have a great day. Any last words, Sparky? Nope. Keep safe. You know. Like, share, subscribe. Like, yes, share, like, subscribe. share, subscribe. Have a great day. Talk to you later. All right, guys, here we are back again. We're going to go and we're going to talk about the zombie apocalypse. I got Sparky here, my moderator. She is amazing and beautiful. Just ask Rooster. She'll tell you that she's also sexy. Um, This is actually going to air on Halloween, if all think goes correctly. I will be on a ship on Halloween on my way to Bermuda, so we're pre-recording this. Um, it's... Sparky, I know that you've been excited. You want to do this so bad. I do, too. What are we talking about today? Go for it. Zombie apocalypse. So, whether it be movies like 28 Days Later, Shaun of the Dead, Warm Bodies, TV shows like iZombie or The Walking Dead, or books like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, the thought of the undead has thrilled, fascinated, and terrified us. On this week's podcast, we will go over what you can and should do if you find yourself in the zombie apocalypse. Oh, my God.
If only we could just kill all of the neighbors that annoy us. I know who would go first. <laughs> Shade. <laughs> well, he lives far enough away, so uh, I don't have to deal yeah. with him. Damn it. Evan. He also lives far enough away. I would I make the trip. With it. I would make the goddamn Although, trip. I think that you and I should pair up if there is a zombie apocalypse. If there's a zombie because... apocalypse. You want to come and kill Evan with me? <laughs> I have right. to get a boat. <laughs> so for, for this whole thing, I actually went out, did my makeup, and got myself a good sturdy killing machine. I love so it. So do I. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, she's going to go with the baseball bat. I went with the old-fashioned blade on a stick. I also have... Uh, yep. Actually, I've been thinking about this for a while. And one of the things that always frustrates me is every time that there is zombies, um, you see people shoot them with bullets and the bullets go straight through. Right? Like military. Because the military is not allowed to use things like um, hollow points. The reason why I think hollow points are the best way to go. Like, you should definitely stock up on hollow points. And the reason why is because if it hits a zombie, instead of taking this little hole out of, of flesh, it's going to take something like that. Because what you end up needing to do is incapacitating or destroying the brain of the zombie itself since it doesn't feel pain and it goes until something is actually broken off so like i said if you if you hit somebody in the arm with a hollow point you're going to destroy that arm entirely all the muscle will not work because you've destroyed everything that mechanically is there and it once it hits it actually fans out and i've got a nine mil with about 50 rounds and it's impossible i don't give a shit how many times you watch Walking Dead, it's impossible to hit that many headshots. We'll ask any special forces. I've been in a situation where I've had to kill people myself. Guess what? It's just impossible to hit that many headshots. Uh, you gotta wait till they get too close, and you don't want the zombies that close to you to begin with. So, no, stopping don't. power. <laughs> stopping power. Aim for the bone, use hollow points, things like that. I mean, that's one thing that honestly and frustrates me. And try to get a silencer because a lot of these zombies are actually like attracted to sound. Silencers, if you can. Uh, so, so something that a lot of people don't know: silencers do not make. Uh, it's very silent. It, I mean, it deafens it a little bit, but it's it, not like. It basically makes it so that you don't have to wear he ear ear pro. You don't have to work anything in your ear. That's all it really does. Just deafens it just enough. But yeah, I get what you're saying. I guess that would that would definitely help for a hundred plus meters away. Right. Like you're not gonna want a shock. I mean, shotgun's gonna be like your last hurrah, basically. That's just gonna cause way too many problems. You know, there's something that uh, also bugs me. I guess zombies, like, would they be fast at the beginning and then slow as they deteriorate, or would they be? slow from the beginning i don't know Ooh. i mean there there are a couple things that you can see where um there was a zombie mushroom that that actually have you guys have you heard of this the zombie the 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 the, like, the, the little um little zombie isn't plant called, isn't it called like cordyceps or something like that or cordycepsis i don't know how to pronounce it but i know how to spell it if i'm correct it attacks like little critters and actually like gets into their brain and basically zombifies them well it, it, it okay so what it does so it usually attacks uh anything that's an anthropod so like spiders and and in uh you know smaller insects ants the cockroaches things like that so it, it infects it gets into them infects it creates a condition inside the body that makes that 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 individual animal want to be in the perfect environment to spore it, right? Um, I, I just can't remember what what the heck it's called, though. But I it think was, it's it, um... sorry. No, I mean I can't I can't remember what it, I can't remember what it's called. It's, I think I, it's I, called I, cordyceps. It's C O R D. I think E. -S B, Y, something like that. If you start looking it up, write zombie fungus, and it'll probably pop up for you. 
Zombie fungus. Let's take a look. Here. Oh yeah, here we are. Zombie fungus. So let me just let me just go. So how the zombie to, fungus get... takes over ants' bodies to control their minds. It's so basically it, it what it does is it invades them as a parasite and then makes them crave the conditions like like um makes them crave sunlight, makes them crave uh moisture, things like that in order to in order to get. So to find the world sinister examples of mind control, don't you don't need to look at mind control. Instead, go to the tropical country like Brazil and venture deep into the jungle, find a leaf that hangs almost exactly 25 centimeters above the forest floor. No more, no less. Uh, now, look underneath it, and if you are lucky, you might find an at clinging to a leaf uh, or central vein. So he's with the jobs clamps, you can kind of see here. On this beautiful Atlantic article by Ed Young. So another, it, what is sorry. it called? No, no, infamous parasite. It, it didn't say what it's called though. Oh, here we are. That a... Orphopedic pedibus. In a bit of a bit of a I turn. actually thought of another like thing of zombies. Um, again, I don't know how factual this is, but down in like um, New Orleans in Louisiana. Um, there were people who were being injected or given this stuff which would make them look dead. They'd bury them, unbury them, give them something else, and they basically had mindless zombies. So I read up on exactly what you're talking about. This was that thing attached to voodoo. It became very popular uh, all throughout the United States. But uh, they found that a lot of the zombie, um, the zombie mind frame was psychosomatic. So basically, people believed they were zombies, therefore they would act like zombies, therefore it kind of just rolled into itself. Oh, yeah. It was like, kind of like a yes and. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 I, I remember reading about that because I'm a big James Vaughn fan. And, yes. And they oh, that. yeah, that's my fa one of my favorite James Bond movies, actually. Dude, I, I'll tell you what. I'll tell Live you and what. let die. Live uh, and let love die. Living. <laughs> Speaking of cards, I also because that cards play a big part in that movie. Uh -huh. I have these zombie apocalypse survival deck. Yeah, but you have, have a like guide. Little... They're all you on the cards. <laughs> <laughs> no, the survival deck is. I got the guide. I have no idea where it is, so I guess I fail too. This is informative and entertaining. Now I will say, what is what do you think the best weapons are? You you, you brought up shotguns should be the last resort, silencers, obviously having hand weapons. Honestly, be... I think your best bet is probably going to be like a bladed hand weapon of some sort. Hmm. Is you want to you want to kill the brain as quickly as possible. You also want reach because you don't want it to get too close. So Sword. a bat that's modified, maybe, mm. with like uh, a blade, like you said, or you know, barbed wire, you know, Lucille. Um, barbed wire. Also, also like machetes, hatchets, basically anything that you can get a lot of force into. You want to. You are you trying to get, to get the through head. the skull, yeah. Yeah. You are trying to get and through again, the skull. And you don't want to be too close because if you're too close and you miss. You're going to get bit. And that would suck. <laughs> so practice, practice, practice. Yes. Practice. It, you got you to gotta be accurate with your swings, guys. You got to be accurate with your swings. If you're not, well, you're going to die. And there is this study out. By the way, there was a study that was actually done by, oh, who was this? The University of Lycorist. All right. It says that if the zombie apocalypse did actually happen, we would be down to 237 survivors within 100 days. I think they're wrong. Um, yeah, I no. don't have any science to back that up, but I think that in 100 days, I mean, it even took longer for the uh, COVID virus. COVID virus took about 180 days to circ circumvent right. the world. You know what? That's actually a good question. Hold on. Let's see. 
Oh, I don't want to search it right now, but you know, I, I think it took 180 days. Right. To be very honest. But And you know Good. Honestly, the people I think are gonna go first are the ones that need like certain medications to survive. Unfortunately, my friends with diabetes, unless you have lots of insulin, it's not gonna work. Yeah. You have to find insulin and then it's gonna run out and then you're still gonna be screwed, so Unfor know. Unfortunately, yeah, when it comes down to the basic needs and you, you see the infrastructure falling. I mean, I, we, I think we've seen a little bit of this with, with the COVID. Um, first off, we saw how fast a virus can actually oh, yeah. circumvent the world. Um, I remember in January telling my friend, like, like, have you heard about this COVID thing? And like, oh, it doesn't mean anything. It's just Trump trying to trying to be trying to scare everybody else. I, I, I don't. I don't know. And then, you know, by by May, everybody was like, oh, my God, I'm not going to die. <laughs> and, then, you know, by May, I was going like, um, guys, this virus wasn't quite as bad as we thought. And they were all freaking out at that point. We're like, oh, my God, I'm not going to oh, die. Yeah. And we're like, no, no, no. I mean, we thought it had a 10% death rate. And it actually has, like, a 0.01% death rate, which is great. It's great. You know, I was, I was really happy and relieved to find out right, that right. the death rate was nowhere near in our, our, our medical system. And we came out with a vaccine. That was really cool. Uh, very, 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 very fast. But um, I don't think that's going to happen when it comes to something that's going to kill you. Like, some, I mean, you know what? That, that, that does come down to it. it. I wonder with this estimate, 273 survivors, how fast they believe the zombie virus would work because let's let's right. say let's say if the zombie virus when it infects you is like covid and it takes 2 weeks before you really show any real symptoms i mean that, then you take that 100 well, days and this is now like 900 days well there are different forms of like zombie viruses so if it's like if it's airborne it's huh. going to hit a lot more people a lot quicker. If it's through infection, like bites and scratches from someone who's already infected, it's going to take less time. Huh. Or if you go through like 28 days later, it's like a, a rage virus. You know, so we, we don't know. We don't know what it's going to be, so we don't know how to prepare for it. Or like The Walking Dead, where you're just inherently going to be a zombie, whatever you do, regardless. As soon as you die, you're going to turn. So I mean we don't really know the specs of that. I, from what I understand about this virus, where where it infects these these anthropods, um, it takes a while. You don't you don't have the problem unless you actually come in contact with the spores from this from this uh, uh, plant, and then the the plants, like I said, it, it it infects the body, kind of like like a fungus, right? It's it's an infection in essence, and then it creates conditions inside of the body where you crave the right conditions for it to survive and then like the ant spends the rest of its time trying to get comfortable and and going up uh something like this where it, it climbs up a tree or something like that and then hooks itself into the inner workings and then then all of a sudden it becomes the actual i just thought of itself. something hmm. That's almost very like, I guess what's kind of what they did with Resident Evil 7. I know you didn't end up playing that, but it is <gasps> like a type Evan. of like. <laughs> Evan, stop the video. Go back a few minutes. <laughs> That's where it ended. Yeah, but basically that virus is like a fungus and it grows. It's, oh. I've never played it. But I watched the game, and it was just well, like, oh Resident, my Resident gosh. Evil had several strains of the virus. One was airborne. And one was only transferred by uh, by bites, and then one actually grew on the ground. So, yeah, and that's the one that's prevalent, I think, in Resident Evil Seven and maybe Eight. I, you know, I, I didn't, know. I, I didn't play through played. Eight because a certain person begged me to play Eight until <laughs> I didn't want to beg, until I didn't want to play Eight. <sighs> We won't go over that. <laughs> We're gonna go over this. Um, I, you know what? That that is that is true. When when uh, I I the, I think the week before the weekend before uh, Halloween hits, we got to do a bunch of horror streams and have some fun with some yes. horror. I was going yes. back today and I was watching all of my um, Emily Emily plays. I dropped oh. jumped down. Oh the, god! I I jumped uh. down that hole and I was like I was sitting there. I was like. 
I jumped down the hole and I died, and then I unlocked that um that achievement that said you probably shouldn't have gone down there. <laughs> and I was yeah. like, wait, I did only three percent of players had actually been dumb enough to jump down the hole. That was the ultra rare part. achievements. It's a very rare <laughs> achievement. Ninety-seven percent of players don't know that you're not supposed to jump down the hole because they never actually did it. I feel like that, uh, that, that we got to pump those. Those are rookie numbers. We got to pump those numbers up. Um, all right. So here's the thing: is is if this is going to be a successful virus, let's say let's get back to the zombie apocalypse. It can't infect like bumfuck nowhere tennessee right i mean if you if you infect go fuck yourself tennessee back with a population of 50 it's probably gonna die there <laughs> it's probably gonna it's probably going nowhere uh you'd have to infect a larger population um at least 100,000 people, 50,000 people. Somebody's got to travel. Can we pause for just a second? Huh. No. Uh, I had a call from the vet's office. Uh, yeah, I can. I can. <laughs>